Hello again. It's good to be back with you this new year, 2021. I'm Pastor Greg Williams, and this is my wife, Brenda, from Grace Lutheran Church in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Happy New Year, and God be with you. Today we're focusing on Epiphany, the uh, second, third season in the church year. Advent was the first, Christmas, and now Epiphany. Epiphany Day, we remember and read the scripture from Matthew about the wise men arriving from the east that had followed the star uh, to find Jesus. And they'd stopped by Herod, of course, and Herod and, the, and his scholars sent them on to uh, Bethlehem to find Jesus. So that's our focus today. Brenda's got a wonderful song for us, of course, but I want to begin with the prayer of the day for Epiphany. Let's pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you reveal the incarnation of your Son by the brilliant shining of a star. Shine the light of your justice always in our hearts and over all lands, and accept our lives as the treasure we offer in your praise for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, I uh, decided to pick the Old Testament reading for Epiphany Day. It's one that we read back in Advent, turns out. Surprise, surprise. It's from the 60th chapter of Isaiah, the first six verses. And they'll sound familiar and I hope encouraging to you in this time as the pandemic goes on and, and winter moves forward. So Isaiah, the 60th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughter shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah and those from Sheba shall come, that shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Isaiah, of course, was speaking to people who were far from home, away in the, the darkness, the cloud, the, the worry of exile, much like we are in that cloud of pandemic. I want to focus on the first verse in Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Light. We passed the shortest day of the year already back in December, and the days are, are getting longer, and we're glad for that. Vaccines are being distributed, so the heaviness that we feel during this worrisome pandemic may be starting to, to brighten a bit. We remember that, that light therapy is, is a way for some people with seasonal affective disorder, I think it is, um, that seasonal depression, to find hope and encouragement and to feel better. Light. The brilliant light of a star led the wise men, the magi, from far away to Jesus to the infant, to the child who is the light of the world. And this Epiphany Day, 12 days after Christmas, is when we celebrate their arrival. And we celebrate that the good news of God made known in Jesus is now shown to all the world as those wise men traveled back home. So I want to give you a question to ponder and you can pause the video after this to think about it or, 
or maybe journal about it. Remembering that darkness is as bright as day to God, where are you seeing light in the darkness of this pandemic? Where are you seeing light in the darkness right now? So think about that a bit. Then the sec another word in that first verse, glory. This one's a little harder to unpack, isn't it? Well, it's college football season, isn't it? The bowl games are being played. The championship game comes up next week. Teams have been playing and seeking the glory of victory. Celebrations follow for the victorious teams. For those of us whose teams lost, we start to pick apart the game and the mistakes to rationalize the loss. It's one type of transient glory, isn't it? For who knows what the next day holds for these teams the next season. But Isaiah says, the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And Luke tells us that when the angels appeared, the shepherds were covered in the glory of God as they announced the arrival of the Savior. God's glory, of course, is light years different from the transient glory of those sports teams. For God's glory is permanent. God's glory affects change. I think that's what I like about Frederick Beatner, what he wrote about God's glory. He says, glory is God's style. When the Bible tells us that the heavens are telling the glory of God in Psalm 19, it's saying that the heavens are revealing God's style. Think about God's style. The magnificent sunsets, the starry nights, the meteor showers this week, dust storms, rainforests, all the variety of creation. Look in the mirror. Look at that marvelous sign of God's glory, God's styling, creating the uniqueness of your very face. Bigner says, all of these things, all of creation are unmistakably the work of a single hand. It's God's style, God's glory. God's style, God's glory is a revelation that's meant to bring about change. And Isaiah, God's glory, brought the exiles back to Jerusalem, back to their homeland. The shepherds were the first to meet Jesus. It changed their lives as they returning praising God for what they had seen. And the wise men came bringing gifts and returned, changed forever by seeing the glory of this new king. So a question for you, to ponder for you. How have you been changed when you've encountered God's glory or God's style in your life? How has God's glory or God's style changed you? Then the last two remaining words, which were the first in the verse, arise and shine. I think they indicate what our response to God's glory is to be. Think about it. Arise. Get up. Get moving. Get out of bed. Get on your feet. Get out and show and share the love of God with neighbors in need. With one whose light has been darkened by the pandemic. Arise and then go shine, for what you do in the name of God brings God's glory present and shines God's glory in that place through that act in that time. The style of God through you, your mercy, your acts of compassion, your advocacy for justice, your love for another, your self-sacrificing act, that's God's style showing up, being made known in you for the well-being of others. So a question to ponder. What will you arise and do so that others will recognize God's glory shining through you? What are you going to what are you going to do to show God's glory? And when are you going to do it? Never better day than today, is there? Brenda picked a song about God's glory and style.
that was revealed to the shepherds, to the wise men, changing them. And now, through scriptures and the faithful witnesses of so many saints through the, through the centuries, is revealed to us. The day and the effect of that glory, I think, is shining in us, is captured in the hymn, O Day Full of Grace. Thank you, Brenda. sustains us. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for that day of grace when you took on flesh and bone and became one of us in the baby Jesus. We give you thanks for that day of grace when your people returned from exile, when the shepherds heard the good news proclaimed by the angels and saw it with their own eyes. That day of grace when the, the Magi had traveled for so long and so far beheld the wonder of the new king. Lord, bless us with days of grace where we become a part of shining your glory into the places of our world so desperate, so hurting, so in need that those places, those people too might have their lives changed by your glory, your presence. Give us strength and courage to do that Continue to shepherd, surround, and support us all. Especially we pray for health care workers, those organizing and dispensing vaccines, and for those who continue to struggle with COVID infections and recovery and so forth. Give them all that's needed in body and spirit to persevere and to continue to enjoy life. We pray these things and the other prayers in our hearts. In the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please join us in praying together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And if you would, uh, usually this is an evening devotional, so we end with Luther's evening prayer, 
uh, pray along with us in the words on your screen. We, we give, give thanks, thanks to you, you Heavenly Father, Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins, where we have done wrong, and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. And now may God's glory shine brightly in your life. May God's glory change your life, brighten your day as you become the hands and feet of Christ, bringing that glory into the lives of others. Amen. Amen. God be with you.